Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I am doing this video about tarot throwback. It's 6 p.m. just got home from a day at the store doing readings. There wasn't a big crowd for me this time, which was fine. It's because of the weather. Finally, we have warm weather here in Holland. So actually pretty excited about that, uh, even though I, you know, was inside all day. I did get to enjoy that a little bit. So, tarot throwback, in case you don't know, I am basically doing some deep, consistent inner child work. If you want to know exactly how I go about it, check out last week's video. And this is really just an update and some extra little things that I wanted to share, perhaps already my last tarot throwback 2023 video for now. Decks I've been using is, of course, my inner child deck. Tarot of a Moon Garden, we're gonna look up close at some of these cards because there's a lot of things hidden there. Using my Dutch Toth, I always have this one in my bag. Haven't used it that much for myself. And then Crow's Magic, <laughs> which I love currently, especially because of the color palette, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know what's happening. Gotta get into that too. My tastes are changing so quickly right now. Such a rapid transformation in what I actually like and what attracts me. I think it's because of this experiment that I'm doing. And then there's Rider Waite Smith Blue Box that I only used once and I think I'm just gonna leave it in the bookcase for the rest of this experiment. And actually I'm almost done. So let's just talk about this. <laughs> Okay, tarot throwback, as I explained last week, is a time travel ritual for me. I make sense of things that are important and happening and relevant to my life now, the present moment, by taking a look at where that came from, as far as I know. And sometimes the cards, of course, just like with shadow work, can be very surprising. Most of all, it's revealing. Now, I am approaching the cards for a longer period of time, a month, in this specific way only for myself, with just these decks, and I am not drinking any alcohol for that month. Those things initially were not related, but actually those two happening at the same time makes a lot of sense. Kids usually don't drink alcohol. And instead of it grounding me, more of me being more present maybe in conversations with people or just walking through Amsterdam. I am finding that my brain works better, but that also means that I am in dreamland, in wonderland constantly. I don't mind that. I haven't heard any negative feedback. Although maybe the only thing was that a picture was taken <laughs> at 2 30 in the morning after a show that I saw with my friends and we were all having a drink at a bar. I was pretty much the only one sober there and you could tell in the picture I looked so bored even though I wasn't. I think I was tired because <laughs> without drinking any alcohol you know you feel it when you're tired whereas when you're partying with everyone else on the same level you tend to not notice it so much so you just keep going. At least that's how we do it. <laughs> it's interesting to me personally that these two things actually very much correspond because I was the dreamiest kid ever. I was very good at focusing and concentrating and I was very disciplined when I needed to be, when I wanted to be. I was also very introverted and so the world, my world mostly happened in here. <laughs> I've talked about this on Patreon there's also this thing that happened in my home. I have this protective symbol next to my door and for the first time in, I don't know, since I moved in here and hung up that thing, I made it myself out of nowhere, suddenly. It just had fallen off the wall on its own. And so pretty much at the same time, I'm also doing this home protection spell because <laughs> I have a lot of things to explain and I don't know if this is interesting, but let me just log it. 
To me, the square, the four that I was talking about, oh, that looks like Illuminati, uh, um, the four, the square I was talking about last week, it means home protection. The square is a building, it's four walls, it's the foundation, it's the security, it's that safety. It means house and home and protection and grounding because the square or the cube is also earth. And actually the number four, as it has four corners, means a lot to me exactly regarding that. So to me, numerologically, the four means house and home and protection and all of that. We used to live on number four. Let me just tell you, we, we used to live on the number four before it all went down the drain. Where was I? I was trying to explain that four has a lot of significance, personal significance to me regarding this. And so I decided to do it once a week for a month equal four times. And what was I doing? Basically, I made my own intention work, my own quite simple, but still, in my opinion, effective ritual for home protection and basically my own protection as well that I repeat for a month. A month is always, and to me four, is always a really good whole, you know? We have four seasons, we have four, what's it called, north, south, east and west, four phases of the moon almost, you could say. Four is a pretty good structure that you can count on. I like these nuances in ritual. So I'm taking my time to bring back in that protection in my home because I truly felt like a door was open, guards were down. So I made sure to focus on that. And then at the same time, I also felt pretty drained from the internet, really. And this is probably very strange coming from someone who actually makes videos every week. But it's true, the things I was looking at and continue to look at, being invested in things that I didn't actually care about, the kind of information that I was exposed to, I can blame myself, really did not do me any good. It's okay, it happens. But all of that together is home protection. It's to avoid this overwhelm, right? This oversaturation, this, this why is my life this all of a sudden? All the things I don't want, that's an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Why am I giving away my energy and it's draining to things I do not care about? And even worse, they make me feel bad, unhealthy, all of those things. So the connection was gone. This means also that you can see your body as a home. After all, body is earth. And so doing the home protection, at the same time, I was definitely protecting myself from all of this. This is the information age still, and I feel we're all still getting used to it, <laughs> uh, except for the generations that grew up with it, not knowing at all, or not even being able to comprehend what the world used to be like without any internet or smartphones. Being available all the time, it's too much. I feel like we are becoming robots, you know? And I feel myself sometimes in complete disconnect, and I know why. It's because I've been spending too much time working on my phone. I'm not at that point yet, although I often go back and forth, where I feel I'm going back to a stupid phone. That's what we call it. You know, the flip phone? That was nice to hang up on someone. Well, screw you then. Dang. <laughs> now you have, well, screw you then. Doesn't work. <laughs> it's not sliding. So frustrating. No, I, I, I wouldn't say that to someone on the phone. We are overall these days bombarded with way, way, way too much information. And maybe I'm adding to it by being online and making videos, but I hope there's this, I don't know, relatability where, I mean, I'm just sharing at this point that I sometimes feel this way. Yeah, anyway, regarding the smartphone, same with laptop, I do sometimes think I'm going to just throw it all out the window, but then I don't because I do agree to a certain extent that nowadays life would be a lot, lot harder without, you know, Google Maps navigation system. I don't really know I would find my way <laughs> ever. Although I do enjoy asking for directions still. 
call me old fashioned. I just pretend I don't have a phone on me. Or sometimes even I ask a stranger on the street what time it is, just because I'm like, oh, I don't have a watch. <laughs> phone is in my bag. I really do enjoy making these videos, sharing this stuff about tarot and Patreon, absolutely, having a lot of fun there. Just so you know, for the month of June, I'm sharing that ritual that I made myself. And so yeah, I might be uh, floating in space a little bit in my head, but it's a little bit reminiscent of a cleanse. Maybe that is what it is. Not drinking alcohol for a month for someone who usually, yeah, enjoys some drinks, you know? And at the same time, being back at the altar at least once a week, and at the same time doing inner child work all the time, and that Matrushka method where you actually go deeper and deeper. It's really a good ritual slash exercise to get to know yourself more. Be more authentic. Oh, anything else. Ugh, that's what I was thinking. Anything else? Yes, yes, something else. Doing all of this, it's resulting at the moment in wanting a bit of a makeover. <laughs> that's so weird to say because, okay, I might enjoy looking decent but i'm not very much into looks in general not into my looks not into other people's looks you do what you want or don't i don't i don't know i just don't <laughs> it's not my area of expertise or interest even but right now oh man i just want to look more like crow's magic tarot i just want to look more like ritual tarot <laughs> I want to look more like Toth. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm at this point where I'm letting go of a few low points and I'm now finally starting to come out of it. And I wasn't even aware I was still in that low point, low energy space. Of course it's due to the sunshine. We never freaking see the sun in this country. And it's great, we see it now. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm first going to go through my whole wardrobe, which isn't huge, I can tell you that. All the things I don't like, I'm going to try to transform them into something I do like or donate them. And just pick out the pieces that I like because I wear the same stuff all the time. It's just because it's easy and comfortable and it's there and it kind of fits with that thing, I think. That means I never really have fun with what I look like, except for maybe makeup sometimes, or nail polish. Nail polish, that I do. I have fun with that. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Hair is always the same. I mean, this is, I, I don't know. I'm sharing this because it's a clear sign that I feel better about myself. It's a clear sign that I'm more open, more confident. It's so weird to say this, but I feel the confidence I feel it right here. It's right there. Can you see it? It's here. Also, just the way of reading cards for myself. I usually really just sit down and contemplate things. I take my time and it's a very quiet moment. Whereas the other day, I picked the Ace of Wands and my first reaction was, and I actually said it out loud to myself. Yes, girl, that's what I like to see. I love this. That's not a normal reaction for me. So I am in the process and it is as it is starting of renewing something letting go of something getting out of a dark dull stupid place so yeah this type of self-expression is just one of those things i want to do for myself and actually i've decided to take it seriously <laughs> and add it to the goals i set for myself this year so let me quickly end with showing you some of these cards from my inner child deck because as i probably said i am mainly focusing on this deck and then using crow's magic just because this is the voice of someone i work with page of cups obviously our inner child card this card i picked at the very beginning of Tarot Throwback 2023, I picked it for myself. It was a clear message that I was on the right track doing this for myself. I got Two of Cups today in a three-card spread, and I just liked what the little white book had to say about it. 
because it's a bit different than a regular Rider-Waite right Smith. As you can see, it's much more pippish already. Two of Cups. Love, friendship, beginning or renewed. Passion, union, engagement, understanding, cooperation, partnership, and marriage. I don't know, I'm used to see the Three of Cups as the friendship card, but here they put it in the Two of Cups, which I like because I have two cups here and friendship shit really was one of the parts that made me go into that more dark place that I didn't even really realize I was in. Here the sun card. As a kid I wouldn't have seen this in the card but it's very pride month <laughs> which is fun and then the world card I don't even know why I picked this one. I think maybe this is one of the few decks where I tolerate dancey poses. Oh yeah, it's because the fool, I also picked the fool with his sort of ballet shoes. He has the power to dance through the world. Here he is. See how special that is? I like that. And so in the world card it says if you did your little dance and you arrived at this whole world. I really like the staffs or batons or wands, they're called staffs in this deck, are actually trees. Because this next to the Two of Cups friendship card actually showed it's less of a sudden fiery card almost. It's showing sometimes we just grow in different directions. Then there's Seven of Staffs here. And I love this because I have a special connection to the Seven of Wands since that's an energy I feel I need. I really like that the first six ones over here are skinny, skinny little wands. And then the actual wand, you know, like in the Seven of Wands of the Toth deck, we really see that extra wand, like in a Marseille, front and center and being very strong and it's just a stick you picked up quickly to defend yourself. And here it's actually a very strong, deep-rooted tree that is older and wiser than the ones beside him. Nine of Staffs, I know you guys have been telling me, but there's a whole person hidden behind that center tree. King of Cups here, something I noticed is some cards are near a wall. This really emphasizes the anchor that he is, which totally makes sense for King of Cups. It's an anchor, a safe haven, anyone? And then we have the pentacles in this deck, which are still element of earth, but they are bubbles. Bubbles, air, why? But I did save the best for last because what I've realized is that you can see these as pollen. You can see these as the little seeds of the dandelion flower. Now the dandelion has different stages. It's blooming when it's all yellow and then it turns white or gray and gets all fluffy. A gust of wind takes away those little helicopter seeds and makes sure that they plant themselves where they need to be, when and where. This is what makes sense. So if you have this deck, have you ever thought of it in this way? So that's all I wanted to share with you today. Thanks so much for being here. Next week, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make that video. I'm going to be talking about the Crow's Magic Tarot some more. And you'll all be surprised. Trust me. Okay, see you next week. Thank you very much for being here. Have a good weekend.